blessings to uh, to everybody. Listen, for those of you that are coming in, I want you to go ahead and uh, share with your followers. For those of you that are coming in, blessings to everybody. It's a little late here in the ATL, right at about 11.35 um, Eastern Standard Time. Hey, Crystal, blessings to you. Good to see you. Blessings to you. Brother Mel, blessings to you, man. Good to see you. Vivian, good to see you. Michelle, good to see you. Blessings to you. Some of the names I can't make out, so don't don't charge it to my heart, charge it to my head. Do apologize. Blessings to everybody. Hopefully you're having a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful night. And you are just expecting God to do some great and awesome things for you before the end of this year. I think it's imperatively significant that we understand that there is no manifestation apart from expectation. If you're not expecting God to do something, God won't do nothing. I hope you are excited. I hope you're standing on tiptoe anticipation because uh, if my math serves me right, after tonight, we will have 12 days left in the year of December. Just in time for God to work another miracle where your life is concerned. If God created creation, within six days, rested on the seventh day, and sure enough, God can give you a miracle within the next 12 days. How many, how many know, how many know that God can give you a miracle within the next 12 days? I mean, that, that, listen, there are people all over the globe that are literally giving up on this year and preparing for things to work out for them on next year. Giving up for this year. Preparing for doors to open for them on next year. But my question to you is this. Why are you giving up this year, preparing for next year, when there are yet 12 days after today, there are yet 12 days left in this year? Do you not believe that God can work a miracle for you in 12 days? Have you, have you, have you given up on God? because the devil have deceived you into thinking that there's only 12 days left in this year. And if God didn't do it for you in February, he ain't going to do it now. The devil is a liar. And listen to me, if God was able to create creation, I feel glory now. If God was able to create creation within six days and rest on the seventh day, then sure enough, God's able to give you a miracle within 12 days. If God was able to create creation in six days and rest on the seventh day, then sure enough, God's able to heal your body within 12 days. If God was able I feel glory right now. 
if God was able to create creation within six days and rest on the seventh day, then sure enough, God can deliver your marriage. I don't care where it is. Sure enough, God can deliver your marriage within 12 days. If God was able to create creation within six days and rest on the seventh day, then sure enough, God can deliver your son from drugs within 12 days. If God, I'm talking about he who is sovereign, was able to create creation within six days and rest on the seventh day, then sure enough, he can deliver your daughter from lesbianism within 12 days. I'm Listen, I'm talking about, I'm talking about the sovereign God. I think many of us have forgotten that God is sovereign. I think many of us have forgotten that the word sovereign simply means he does whatever he wants to do, whenever he wants to do it, however he wants to do it, however he desires to, when he desires to, through whomever he desires to do it through and can't nobody call him on it because he's God. I think many of us have forgotten that God is sovereign. Listen, God has no timetable but his own. I say he has no timetable but his own. He operates out of nobody else's box but his own. God can do what he wants to do whenever he wants to do it. Don't you dare give up on God just because after today, it is about 1140, 1143 here, and in and, and Atlanta, Eastern Standard Time, don't you dare give up on God just because after tonight there's only 12 days left in the year as if God can't work a miracle in 12 days, as if God can't deliver you in 12 days, as if God can't bring you out in 12 days, as if God can't heal your marriage within 12 days. As if God can't save your son within 12 days. As if God can't deliver your daughter within. If God. I feel something right now. I said I feel something now. If God was able. To create creation. Within six days. And rest on the seventh. Then sure enough. God can deliver you within 12 days. You, you don't know how long I've been going through what I've been going through. God can deliver you within 12 days. You don't know how rough it's been. God can deliver you within 12 days. You, you don't know how, how difficult it's been. God can deliver you within. You, you don't know, prophet, how challenging it. God can deliver you within 12 days. Rhonda, if he created creation within six days and rested on the seventh day, and sure enough, God can give you a miracle within 12 days. The word of God says this in the gospel according to Matthew. The word of God says this. It says that Jesus could not do many mighty wonderful works in Nazareth save or accept, heal a few sick folk, watch this now, because of their unbelief. The only thing that's standing between you and your next miracle is you and your unbelief. I just, my God, I felt something right there. I said, the only thing that's standing between you and your next miracle is you and your unbelief. It says he could not do 
many mighty wonderful works in Nazareth. Why? Save, save the word of God says, or accept heal a few sick folk. And here's the reason. It says because of their unbelief. You know what that tells me? That tells me he wanted to heal and deliver everyone that he came in contact with. But the only ones he could heal and he would deliver were those who believed he could. He could not heal but a few sick folk in Nazareth because of their unbelief. The only thing that's standing between you and your next miracle is you and your inability to believe God. Jesus said to the man whose son was vexed with devils in the gospel according to Mark. He said anything. I felt something right there. He said anything is possible to him that believe. Let me, let me block this fool. Are y'all with me? He said... He said, he said, anything is possible to him that believeth. I come to talk to us to speak to somebody's faith now because you've got, you've got 25 days. I come to speak to somebody's faith. Without faith, it's impossible to believe God. The book of Hebrews says, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is. By God, I feel glory. And that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. And you ain't got to have strong faith. You ain't got, you ain't got to have strong faith. All you need is faith the size of a mustard seed. And God says, Jesus said, you can move mountains. You ain't got to have strong faith. Nah, you ain't got to have strong faith. You, you ain't got to have powerful faith. A mustard seed is the smallest of seeds. A mustard seed is the minutest of seed. It doesn't matter how powerful your faith is. It doesn't matter the size of your faith. If you've got faith the size of a mustard seed, the word of God says you can move mountains. I just need to be able to exercise the faith that I have. I don't need strong faith. I just need to be able to exercise the faith that I have. I don't need big faith. I just need to be able to exercise the faith that I have. I don't need powerful faith. I just need to be able to exercise the faith that I have. Somebody say exercise the faith that I've got. All you need to be able to do is to exercise the faith that you have. It ain't got to be powerful. It ain't got to be profound. It ain't got to be big. It ain't got to be strong. You just need to activate what you have, even if it's the size of a mustard seed. Because God says, if so it is, you can move mountains. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. I come to speak to somebody's faith. You got 25 days. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. There were things even in my own life that I'm believing God for that has not come to pass in this year as of yet, that has not come into fruition, that has not come into manifestation, but the devil is a liar. If he think that I'm about to give up on God just because there's only 25 days left. Some of you all are in that place now. You're just giving up, giving up, giving up, giving up on God in 2019. Preparing for a move in 2020. Why are you giving up on God in 2019 when there are yet 25 days left in the year? You don't think your God is big enough to move for you within 25 days? 
You don't think your God is strong enough to move for you within 25 days? You, you don't think he's powerful enough to move for you within 20? I'm talking about the God of the universe and the father of this earth. You don't think that he's big enough to move for you within 25 days? How dare you give up on God just because there's 25 days left in the year? How, how dare you, like the children of Israel when they were in Babylonian captivity uh, in the book of Psalms, how dare you hang your hops upon the willows, giving up as if it's over? It ain't over yet. Put your hands on yourself and say it ain't over yet. I, I said put your hands on yourself. Bible says David encouraged himself. Put your hands on yourself. Speak to yourself. Minister to yourself. Prophesy to yourself. Decree and declare to yourself. It ain't over yet. How dare you hang your harp upon the willows as the children of Israel did in the book of Psalms. As if it's over. Just because there's only 25 days. Honey, can I tell you something? It's just getting started. It ain't over. It's, it's just getting started before I get into this ecumenical prophetic word that God has given me to place in your spirit I came to decree and declare unto you on tonight on tonight don't you dare give up don't you dare give up don't you dare give in don't you dare lay down don't you dare wave the white flag of surrender don't you dare quit just because there's only 25 days left in the year as if god can't move for you within 25 days i'm gonna say it again just in case you didn't get it just in case it didn't register just in case If God was able to create creation within six days, rest on the seventh day. Sure enough, God can give you a miracle within 12 days. I decree and declare tonight that God do something supernaturally astronomical within the next 12 days where your living is concerned that when it happens, you will know beyond a shadow of a doubt that nobody but God could have done this. I decree and declare that within the next 12 days, God does exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond all that you could ask or all that you could think according to the power that worketh within you because his ability to perform is far greater than your ability to perceive. I decree and declare tonight that within the next 12 days, God does something that you've never asked for. God does something that you never prayed for. I decree and declare that within the next 12 days, he do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ask or think. I decree and declare that he not only does what you've asked for and what you've thought about, but I decree and declare that within the next 12 days, God does exceedingly abundantly above all that you could ask or think. I decree and declare that God does something for you that you haven't asked for, that you haven't petitioned him for, that you haven't even thought of. Because his ability to perform is far greater than your capacity to perceive. Somebody missed that. I'm going to say it again. I said God's ability to perform is far greater than your capacity to perceive. I come to minister to those who have given up on God 
in their heart because there's only 12 days left in the new year. I, I, come, to, I come to impart a word of hope into those who are speaking as if they believe God, but yet internally they have given up on God because there are those of you that are here tonight in whom are under the sound of my voice. You talk big, but you walk small, y'all. Oh, you talk like you believe him, but internally you're struggling and you're fighting and you're warring on the inside to trust him. I come to minister to those who say they believe, but yet internally you're struggling to believe that he will. God's a big God. God. I said God's a big God. God's, a, God's an awesome God. God's a great God. There are things that I have believed God for that has not come to pass this year. But I woke up this morning and said to myself, I've got 12 more days. God will, listen, God will be your 12th day God. Y'all, y'all ain't saying nothing. I said he will be your 12th day God. You you haven't seen him do nothing all this year, but God will come through for you within the next 12 days. I said, God will come through for you within the next 12 days. And God, we thank you now. We thank you now. We believe you now we listen he's a right now god he's a right i said he's a right now god with right now miracles in the palm of his hand hmm? i said he is a right now god with right now miracles in the palm of his hands. Prophetic activation is what this scope is titled. Prophetic activation for the next 25 days. Prophetic act activation for the next 25 days. Things are going to begin to line up. Things are going to begin to open up. Things are going to begin to work themselves out. Listen, so, so God has been, God has been using, for whatever the reason is, I don't understand it. It's totally beyond me. But God has been, in this season, using my cell phone to minister to me. And to talk to me. I, I, don't, I don't understand why. I don't understand why. The reason why, the motive why. Is far beyond me. My ways are not your ways. And my thoughts are not your thoughts. So as the heavens are higher than the earth. So are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Saith the Lord. But for whatever the reason is. Whatever the reason is. God has been using my cell phone to minister to me. He's been using my, my cell phone to speak to me. Um, in Exodus chapter 3, he used a burning bush to speak and to minister to Moses. In the book of Numbers, chapter 22, he used the mouth of a donkey to speak and to minister to Balaam. In Judges chapter 6, he spake and ministered to Gideon through a fleece 
or through a synthetic insulating fabric. In the book of Acts chapter 9, he spoke and he ministered to Saul on the Damascus road through a bright light. And if God could speak to Moses through a burning bush, and if God could speak to Balaam through a donkey, and if God could speak to Gideon through a fleece or through a piece of synthetic insulating fabric, if he could speak to Saul through a bright light on the Damascus road, then sure enough, God can speak to Herman through a cell phone. If, if he could speak through a burning bush, if he could speak through the mouth of a donkey, if he can speak through a fleece or a piece of synthetic insulating material, if he can speak through a bright light, then sure enough, God can speak through a cell phone. So God has been, he's been using, he's been using, I've got a word for you, I want you to stay with me. He can, so, so God has been, God has been using, he's been using my, my cell phone, again, for whatever the reason is, and, and it is totally beyond me, but it is what God has chosen in this season to minister to me. God says, I've chosen the foolish things to confound the wise and the weak things to confound those things that are mighty. So God has been using my, my cell phone in this season to, to minister to me and to, uh, and to speak to me. As a matter of fact, the last time that we spoke, I, I talked about how that God spoke to me out of an update that I had just uh, consummated and, and completed on my cell phone. For those of you in whom were here for my very last scope, I talked to you how that God ministered to me, literally gave me a prophetic word for the people of God um, out of an update that had been consummated and, and completed on my cell phone. And, and I discovered that after having consummated and completed the update, that nothing functioned as it once did. And, and I mentioned to you, I mentioned to you how that God said to me that he was updating the seasons and everything in this present season would function differently from what it did, did in last season's past because you cannot put new wine into old wineskins. Which is to say that God would not do something new and keep you in an old, still place. But he's bringing you to a new place in, in this hour and in this season of, of your life. Well, right about, right about a couple of days ago, and I want you to get this and hear this because this is so powerfully profound. This is powerfully profound. This is an ecumenical word. It is a worldwide word. It is a word for the body of Christ at large. Right at about a couple of days ago, uh, the cell phone that I had just recently updated literally crashed on me. Updated the cell phone. Working and function properly. But a couple of days ago, the cell phone in which I had recently consummated and completed an update on, and you have to hear this and get this now, literally crashed on me. It suddenly went out without warning. The fact that the cell phone went out on me uh, was not alarming. 
to say the least. The fact that it went out on me was not alarming, uh, to say the least. Uh, the fact that it went out on me was not alarming, to say the least. But it was the manner in which it went out. It was it was very strange, and and it was it was very bizarre, because when the cell phone, I want you to get this and hear this. I'm the Lord spoke to me as clear as I'm speaking to you right now. When the cell phone went out, everything on the cell phone was functioning, but my ability to my ability my ability to communicate with others and my capacity to hear others that was strange to me. The cell phone went out; it went out. But when it went out, Rhonda, are you getting this? When when it went out, everything on the cell phone was functioning. But my ability to communicate with others and my capacity to hear others. I couldn't hear the other party's voice and the other party could not hear my voice. I was able to, to text on the phone and I had access to, to the other apps on my phone, but I could not hear and nor could I talk. And, and I said to myself, I said, wait a minute, this, this is strange. This is, this is strange. I'm, I'm able to, to text on my cell phone. And I could text anybody anywhere. I've, I've got access to the other apps on my phone. But yet I can't hear. And nor can I talk. And when I brought my phone in to, to the T-Mobile store, when I brought the phone into the T-Mobile store and they began to run several tests on the phone to find out why I was able to have access to other functioning apps but could not hear and could not talk the manager said to me, he said, I thought you had some type of SIM card malfunction. He says, but Mr. Mitchell, looking at your phone, I feel glory now. He says, looking at your phone, he says, I hate to give you this news. He says, but your phone is dead. Your phone is dead. And, and you're going to need to order a new one. He said, your, your phone is dead. And I remember in saying to myself as I stood there, I remember, I remember saying to myself, how could the phone be dead when the power on and power off button is still working? The power on button was still functioning. The power off button was still functioning. And I remember saying to myself, how could my phone be dead? And my power on button is still functioning. And my power off button is still functioning. I, I remember, I remember Sister Ida saying to myself, how could it be dead when the light still comes on? How could, how could the phone be dead when I can still cut the phone on? 
and I can still cut the phone off. How, how could the phone be dead when the light is still bright? How, how could my phone be dead? How could my phone be dead when I still have access to other functioning apps? How, how could it be dead? My, my, and, and I stood there. I, I stood there as I listened to this man telling me, your phone is dead. My phone is dead, but my own and off button is still functioning. My phone is dead, but the light still comes on. My phone is dead, but I can still text. My, my, my phone is dead, but I still have access to other functioning apps. I can still use Google. I can still go to, I can still go to my, my internet. How could my phone be dead? And as clear as I'm speaking to you right now, I heard the Lord say that it's dead because you can't hear. I, I heard I heard the Lord say, I heard the Lord say, my God, I feel, I heard the Lord say that it's dead because you can't hear through it. He said, son, it's dead because you can't speak through it. It's dead. Because the hearing apparatus has been deafened. It's dead because the speaking apparatus has been silenced. And I heard the Lord say this, that in the spirit, when you don't have an ear to hear, nor a voice to speak, you are spiritually dead. Listen, nobody but God could have given me a revelation like that. I'm not smart enough. I'm not intellectual enough. I'm not, I'm not intelligent enough. I don't have insight enough, don't have wisdom enough, don't know enough. Only the Holy Ghost himself could have spoke to me in that manner. Standing up there in the T-Mobile store, God gave me a revelation. The man said, sir, you're going to need a new phone. He says, because your phone is dead. I said, wait a minute. I, I, to myself, I said, I, I, don't, I don't understand this. I, what, what do you mean my phone is dead? Mind you now, mind you, going back to the fact that the reason why I went into the store was because I could not speak on the phone and I could not hear. The people in whom I was speaking to could not hear me speaking. And those in whom were speaking to me, I could not hear them speaking. So, so, the, so, the, so the speaking apparatus on the phone was silenced. The hearing apparatus on the phone was deafened because I could not hear on the phone and nor could I speak on the phone. But I mean, it rung, it came on, it went off. I had access to other apps. But yet I could not speak and I could not hear and I could not, I could not understand why this man at the store was telling me that my phone was dead until God gave me a revelation. And the Lord said to me, he said, son, he said, son, it's dead because the hearing apparatus has been deafened and the speaking apparatus has been silenced. And when you do not have an ear to hear and a voice to speak, he says you are spiritually dead. And the Lord said this to me, and I want you to get this in the Holy Ghost. You got to get this and hear this. The Lord said this to me, Rhonda. The Lord said many of my people have not been functioning effectively because they don't have an ear to hear. My phone could not function effectively because I couldn't hear. 
He says, many of my people have not been functioning effectively because they do not have an ear to hear, nor do they have a voice to speak. I heard the spirit of the Lord say that many of you have been stagnated and you have been immobilized and you have been stationary and you have been dormant and you have been inactive because you don't know what to do because you don't have an ear to hear. See, when you don't have an ear to hear God, you don't know what to do. When you don't have an ear to hear God, you don't know where to go. When you don't have an ear to hear God, you don't know when to move. The Lord says many of my people have been stagnated. They've been immobilized. They have been stationary. They have been dormant. They have been inactive because they do not know what to do because they do not have an ear to hear. Their spiritual hearing apparatus has been deafened. And they don't know what to say because they do not have a, a voice to speak. The Lord said this to me. I want you to get this in the Holy Ghost. Because I'm telling you, I began to weep eternally, internally rather, when I heard what I heard. And the Lord said this to me. He said, son, I want you to know that I allowed your cell phone to go out because I wanted to use it to speak to you concerning where my people are in this season and in this juncture of their lives. He, he says, I allowed your cell phone to go out because I wanted to use it to communicate to you in regards and in, in relation to where my people are in this season. Many of them are lost because they don't have an ear to hear. So, so, so the manager, listen to me. So the manager says to me that we, that we will have to order you. Get this now, get this. I mean, God, listen, God ministered to me. Ain't, ain't nobody going to tell me that God didn't. God ministered to me. The manager then tells me, he says, so Mr. Mitchell, what we're going to have to do from here, what we're going to have to do from here, he says, is that we're going to have to order you a new phone. So I'm standing there and he places an order for a new phone. As a matter of fact, he wanted me to purchase a phone. I said, sir, I, I don't want to purchase a phone. I said, the phone that I'm holding in my hand is paid for. I'm only paying for service, which is about $77. I'm, I'm not about to jump from paying $77 to about $159, $169 on financing another phone. I said, no, I'm, I'm not, I am not going to do this You've got to do something else. He says, I'll tell you what we'll do. He says, we'll write it off. And we'll get you one for free. <laughs> Lift up your hands and say, write it off, Lord, and get me one for free. Y'all get look. Give me a miracle that I ain't got to work for. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Give give me a blessing that I don't that I don't have to grind for. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Lift up your hands and say God's about to write it off. He's you better listen, you better get this in the Holy Ghost. Because I'm telling you, you're not going to hear it like this anywhere else. I'm telling you, God gave me this hot off the press. So he orders me a new phone. Can somebody type new phone, new phone, new phone? He orders me a new phone. So, of course, I get in my car. And I remember what the Lord said to me after having gotten in my car, got in my car, drove off en route to my house. But getting inside of my car, get this in the Holy Ghost, I remembered what the Lord said to me. And the Lord said to me that I allowed your phone to go out because I wanted to use it to speak to you 
concerning where my people were. So, of course, now I'm on my way home and I said on my way home, I said, wait a minute, God. I said, if you allowed my phone to go out so that you can use it to speak to me concerning where your people were. I said, if you allowed it to go out, I said to the Lord on my way home, I said, why did you not just restore my old phone? You allowed it to go out. You, you allowed it to go out. You allowed it to go out. You, you allowed it to go out. This is what you said to me. You allowed my phone to go out. I said to God on my way home, Rhonda, I said, if you allowed my phone to go out, why did you not just restore my old phone to its original functioning capacity? And I heard the spirit of the Lord as loud as day. And the Lord said to me, he says, because I'm not restoring the old voice of seasons past. He says, tell the people of God, I'm giving them a new voice. Lift up your hands and tell the Lord, thank you. Y'all watch where this is going now. Watch where it's going. Watch where it's going. Lift up your hands and tell God says, I didn't restore Somebody says, I love the message. This is the Holy Ghost, my brother. God said, I didn't restore your old phone because your old phone was symbolic of the voice of times past. Your, your old phone was symbolic of an old voice. He says, in this season, I am not restoring the old voice of my people, he says, but tell them that I'm giving them a new voice because for many of you, the devil has attempted to silence your old voice. My God, I feel glory. I, I, he, he says, he says, I'm not, I didn't want to restore your old phone. I feel glory right now. He, somebody says, this is amazing. I didn't want to restore your old phone because your old phone was symbolic of the old voice. He says, but I wanted to give you a new phone because the new phone was symbolic of a new voice. Because for many of my people, God said the devil has attempted to silence your old voice. He's, he's attempted to silence your voice through frustration He's, a, he's attempted to silence your voice through aggravation. He's attempted to silence your voice through impatience. He's attempted to silence your voice through seemingly defeat. When the enemy silences your voice, Here is what happens. Here, here is what happens. Here's what happens. Here's what happens. When the enemy silences your voice, he silences your voice by deceiving you into thinking that speaking over a thing doesn't work. When the enemy silences your voice, he, he silences your voice by deceiving you into thinking that death and life is not in the power of of your tongue. When, when the enemy silences your voice, he makes you think that speaking over something is a big waste of time. And the Lord said, in seasons past, the enemy has tried to silence your voice. He's tried to silence your voice through frustration. He's tried to silence your voice through aggravation. He's tried to silence your voice through impatience. He's tried to silence your voice through seemingly defeat. He's tried to silence your voice by deceiving you into thinking that speaking over a thing doesn't work and it's just a big waste of time to degree a thing and to speak over a thing. 
But I heard the spirit of the Lord say that 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 things that you spoke in times past did not come to pass. But the spirit of the Lord spoke to me. He says, tell them that I say it, say it again. Can somebody type, say it again? He says, tell them I'm giving them a new voice. Somebody said this message is on time. He says, tell them that I'm giving them a new voice. He says, tell them that they didn't come to pass in times past. He says, but in this season, tell them that I say it, say it again. Tell them that I said, speak over it again. Tell them that I said, breathe upon it again. Tell them that I said, say it again. This shall be a season of manifestations of things spoken. You're going to see where God is going to begin to do things that you spoke in times past, but did not come into manifestation, did not come into fruition. You're going to see that in this new season, whereby God has given you a new voice, that you're going to begin to speak things that didn't come to pass in times past, but that will come to pass in this season. This shall be a season of manifestation. God's about to, I heard the spirit of the Lord say that he's about to open your ears. And you are about to hear God in a place where you have never heard God before because it is a season of manifestation. God is going to speak to you. God is going to lead you. God is going to direct you. But God has an understanding that before he leads you, before he guides you, before he directs you, you've got to hear him. And the spirit of the Lord say, told me to tell you that in this season, he's about to open your ears. Ephatha, as Jesus said to the man and whom was deaf and could not speak, which is by way of interpretation, be open. I hear the spirit of the Lord say, Ephatha, be open. God is about to open your ear, your spiritual ear, and you are about to hear God from a place like you have never heard God before. And you're going to know what to do. You're going to know when to do it. You're going to know how to do it. You're going to know which way to turn. You're going to know which way not to turn. You're going to know when to move. You're going to know when to be still. You're going to know when to speak. You're going to know when to be silent because God, is about to open your ears. Lift up your hands and tell the Lord, thank you. He said, tell the people of God that this shall be a season of manifestations. This shall be a season of manifestations because I am about to open their ears and I'm about to put my words in their mouth. Lift up your hands and tell them, thank you. God says, I'm about to open their ears and I'm going to put my words in their mouth. I am about to open their ears and I'm going to put my words in their mouth. Words that have come from God that will produce and bring forth fruit, that will produce and bring forth manifestations. I heard the spirit of the Lord say, that you've spoke your own words in times past and you've seen nothing. He says, but you are about to speak my word in this season and see something. He says, tell them that I am about to fill their mouth with my words. Lift up your hands and say, fill my mouth, Lord, fill my mouth. He says, tell them that I am about to fill my, their mouth with my words. And I heard Isaiah chapter 55, right about verse 11, where God says that my words will not return unto me void. They will not return unto me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. He says, tell them that I'm going to feel their mouth. Some, lift up your hands and tell them thank you. He says, tell them that in this season, 
They, he says, in seasons past, rather, they have spoken their own words and have seen nothing. He says, but tell them that in this season, I'm going to fill their mouth with my words and they're about to see something. They have spoken their own words and have seen nothing. But God says, I'm about to fill your mouth with my words and you're about to see something. Lift up your hands and tell the Lord, thank you. You're about to see something. He's about to fill your mouth with his words and you're about to see something. You're about to see something because in Isaiah 55 and 11, God said, my words will not return unto me void. He said, my words will not return unto me void or empty, but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. Things are about to begin to come to pass. You're, you're about to see things come to pass that you speak over. I said you're about to see things come to pass that you speak over because God is about to fill your mouth with his words. God's about to fill your mouth with his words. You are about to see things come to pass because God is about to fill your mouth with his words. Listen to me. I want you to sow a $25 it's coming to pass seed. Go to the website www.profitmitchell.org or you can go to the website dollar sign herm H-E-R-A, Mitch, M-I-T-C-H, H-E-R-M-M-I-T-C-H. And I want you to sow a $25. It's coming to pass seed. $25. It's coming to pass seed. Things that you have spoken in times past that you have not seen are about to come to pass in this season are about to come to pass in this season. Sister Ida, I don't know what this is about, but the Lord told me to tell you that within the span of one year, something that you believed God for five years ago did not come to pass. God told me to tell you that within the next year, it shall. I don't know what this is. I have no idea what this is about. But there is something that you believed God for five years ago. There is something that you believed God for five years ago that did not come to pass five years ago that within the next year shall come to pass. That woman of God said something. And I caught it. I saw it. Somebody, I don't know who you are, said, I sold with quickness. The Lord said the manifestation is about to happen even quicker. I don't know who that is, but they typed on the screen, I sold with quickness. Right when I saw that, I sold with quickness. When I saw that, I heard that the manifestation is about to come to pass even sooner and even quicker. I want you to sow a $25, it's coming to pass seed. Go to the website, www. Thank you, Dave Polay. Thank you, my brother. Go to the website, www.profitmitchell.org, or you can go to my cash app, dollar sign, Herm, H-E-R-M, Mitch, M-I-T-C-H. And I want you to show that $25, it's coming to pass seed. The Lord said that in this season, He's about to feel, he's about to feel your words or your mouth rather with his words. He's about to feel your mouth with his words. And in times past, when you spoke your own words and saw nothing, you're going to decree the word of the Lord and see something. Isaiah 55 and 11, God says, my word shall not return unto me void. It will not return unto me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. 
I want you to go to the website, www.profitmitchell.org. And I want you to sow a $25, it's coming to pass seed. Go to the website, www.profitmitchell.org, or you can go to the cash app, dollar sign, Herm, H-E-R-M, Mitch, M-I-T-C-H. Is, is that my, is that my, is that my good friend and, and, and my good brother, Prophet Juan? Blessings to you, sir. Good to see you. Blessings to you. Good to see you. Blessings to you. Good to see you. Prophet Wine, I don't even know, I don't even know what this means, but God told me to tell you, to tell your wife he's about to touch her again. Blessings to you, sir. I don't know what this means. And I'm talking about in a physical way, in a physical way, her body. He says, he told me as you came on, he says, tell him that I said that I'm about to touch his wife again. I, I don't know what this is. I don't know what it has to do with, but I want you to give your beautiful wife that word from me. Tell her that God said, He's about to touch her body again. And Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you for touching her body again. Prophet of God, man of God, immediately, immediately when I saw your face, the Lord said, tell my manservant that I shall touch his wife's body again. And Father, right now, we thank you now for touching her again. We thank you for healing. We thank you for deliverance. God, we thank you for wholeness. Thank you. Hallelujah. For touching her again. Father, as I lift up the prophet of God, I thank you for this property that you are giving both he and his wife favor with. As I lift up the prophet of God, as I, as I lift up your manservant, I thank you now for the property that you are giving he and his wife favor concerning. I have no idea what this property is all about. I have no idea what the property is going to be used for, but God, I thank you for giving them favor where this property is concerned. In the name of Jesus, in the name of of Jesus in the name of Jesus come on go to the website www.profitmitchell.org go to the cash app dollar sign Herm H-E-R-M Mitch M-I-T-C-H and I want everybody to show a $25 it's coming to pass seed it's coming to pass. It's coming to pass. What you've been believing God for, what you've been praying for, what you've been seeking God for. God's about to open your ears. God's about to put his words in your mouth. Things you spoke in times past, whereby you saw nothing, you were about to speak in this season and see something because God is about God is about to put his words in your mouth. And in the book of Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11, he says, my word will not return unto me void. Your word will, and your word has. Your word will return unto you void. Your word has returned unto you void. But God says in Isaiah 55 and 11, he says, my words will not return unto me void but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing 
where unto I sent it. God's about to fill our mouth with his words. And you're going to find yourself decreeing a thing and speaking a thing. And God's going to bring it to pass. This is a season of manifestation. If you dare to believe God, it's a season of manifestation. Go to the website, www.prophetmitchell.org. Go to the cash app, dollar sign, Herm, H-E-R-M, Mitch, M-I-T-C-H. And I want you to sow your $25. It's coming to pass seed. decree and declare within the next 25 days God's about to do something for you something that you need him to do within the next 25 days a $25 seed is about to give birth to a miracle that you can't pay for I said a $25 seed is about to give birth to a miracle that you can't pay for. Go to the website, www.prophetmitchell.org. Go to the cash app, dollar sign, Herm, H-E-R-M, Mitch, M-I-T-C-H. And I want you to show this $25. It's coming to pass seed. $25 seed is about to give birth to a miracle that you can't afford to pay for. I decree that within the next 25 days, God is going to do something for you that you don't have the ability to do for yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's a woman of God here tonight. Um, your last name is West. There's a woman of God here tonight. Your last name, your last name is Wes. I see you giving pen to a literary work. I see you giving pen to blessings to you, woman of God. Good to see you on the night. Uh, is this your first time here with us? Yes or no? The woman of God in whom I'm speaking to. Uh, is this your first time here with us on tonight? Um, I see. Okay, she says, no, it's not your first time. Well, blessings. Good to have you back with us. I celebrate you and, of course, appreciate you. Thank God for you. But I see you writing. When I say giving pen to, I mean writing some type of uh, literary work. Uh, God's about to grace your hands. Uh, to write a book. He's about to grace your hands to write a book. Don't know if you've written books before, but I see some type of book that God is going to use you to write and God is going to favor this. But I don't just see you stopping at one book. I see books giving birth to other books, 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 because there is an author on the inside of you. There is an author on the inside of you. I also hear the Lord say that this is a new season for you. And not only is this a new season for you, but there is going to be a new career change. Um, I hear the Lord say that there's a sudden shift uh, that's coming to, there's a sudden shift that's coming to your life. Uh, there is a shift and a, and a, and a change, um, a change of direction. There's a sudden shift, a shift that's coming that's so sudden where, 
the changing of directions or concern uh, that God said this is going to happen so sudden because he doesn't want to give you an opportunity to think about it. I don't know you personally, but you are a very logical person. You're a very logical person. You're a spiritual person, of course, and you believe God, of course, but you are, you're, a very, you're a very logical person. And because you are a logical person, you are a thinker, which is not a bad thing. I understand where I am and what I'm talking about. Uh, because you're a logical person, you, you, you're a thinker. Uh, but I hear the Lord say that one of the reasons why this shift, this shift is going to happen so suddenly and so expeditiously is because your logical thinking uh, would, would actually get you out of the will of God. It's good to think. But in this case, God doesn't want you to think. He just wants you to move. I've discovered in life that there are some things that God does want us to use our minds concern. And he wants us to be logical and he wants us to think it through. But then there are other things that when God speaks and God says, move, you just got to speak and you just got to move. Even when you don't understand why God is commanding you to move. And I hear the spirit of the Lord say that you're in a season where a sudden shift in direction uh, is about to transpire you. And God is not going to give you an opportunity to think about this, but you're just going to have to move upon this because there is a blessing in this for you from God. I'm talking about a next level blessing. God's about to do something for you next level. God's going to also prosper. I want you to lift up your hands because God is going to also financially prosper the very works of your hands. I do not see money coming for you uh, from one channel, but I see multiple channels of income. I see multiple streams of income. I, I see multiple rivers of income. Money for you will not just come from one place, but I see money coming from the north, the south, the east, and the west. And I also hear the spirit of the Lord say, that he has not forgotten about you. He says, I want you to remind her that I have not forgotten about her, but there was a certain time and a certain season. And I hear the spirit of the Lord say that the time and season is now. You're going to find where things are going to begin to move rather quickly for you. Things are going to begin to move rather suddenly for you. Things are going to begin to move rather expeditiously for you. And the reason that they're going to move suddenly and, and they're going to move expeditiously and they're going to move quickly is because you are in your hour. You are in your hour. You are in your hour. God is about to open doors. I hear the spirit of the Lord say that he's about to open doors for you that absolutely no man can shut. Doors were shut on you in times past. Opportunities were stolen in times past. But God said, this is your hour. And I am going to begin to open doors for you uh, that no man can, can absolutely shut. And I hear the spirit of the Lord say that this is a time where you need to really ready yourself. You need to be prepared because God is about to begin to move quickly and he's about to begin to move suddenly. And I speak the peace of God upon your house. I speak the peace of God upon your house. I speak the peace of God upon your house. I come against every depressing spirit. I come against every discouraging spirit. I come against every conflicting spirit and I speak the peace of God upon your house. I command peace in your house and I command peace now. Go to the website www.prophetmitchell.org or the cash app dollar sign Herm, H-E-R-M, Mitch, M-I-T-C-H. And I want you to show everybody, come on, I want you to show that $25, it's coming to pass seed. It's coming to pass seed. I command the peace of God upon your house. 
And I command the peace of God now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessings to you, Lady West. Blessings to you. Blessings to you. Blessings to you, Lady West. Hallelujah. She says, I'm in tears. Blessings to you. New time. New seasons. You're so very welcome. Blessings to you. I appreciate you. Celebrate you. Thank God for you. Watch what God's about to begin to do for you. And God, we thank you. This is a divine moment. This is, this is not just a periscope. It's not just a periscope. This is a divine moment. Thank you so very much. Thank you. I appreciate you. And blessings to you and yours as well. There is a woman of God here. You're here for the very first time. You're here tonight. And the woman of God in whom I'm speaking in reference to, you are here for the very first time. There's something that you've been going through and nobody knew you were going through it because you internalized it and you kept it to yourself. You have been dealing with and contemplating a spirit of suicide. The devil has deceived you into thinking that nothing is going on to change for you and everything is going to remain the same for you. You're here tonight. You're here tonight. My God, I feel glory now. I said, I feel glory. God just, listen, God just opened the door and allowed me to walk into a place and I'm seeing something I've never seen before. Listen, the woman of God in whom I'm ministering to I'm not talking about someone who was here yet, uh, last week, a week before, or last month, a month before. I'm talking to somebody tonight, and you know I'm talking to you. You know that this is God. Talk you are here tonight for the very first time. You're here tonight for the very first time. And whether you confess who you are or not really doesn't, really doesn't make a difference. But God wants me to minister to you. Because the devil tried to get you to take your life. Nothing to be ashamed about. As a matter of fact, I, I, I would you come forth. I would you come forth and give me your name. If this word is for you, if this, if this word is for you, I would you come forth and give me your name. Because I want to I want to pray for you. The devil tried to get you to take your life. And you're here on this scope tonight because God wants you to understand that he has a plan for your life. You are not here, woman of God. You're not here by coincidence. But rather you're here, but rather you're here by way of divine providence. I feel glory now. Wanda. Wanda, is God speaking to you? This is the woman of God made known that this was her first time here. But I wanted her to come forth on her own. Wanda, is God speaking to you right now? Is he speaking to you? Just respond by saying, hallelujah. She said, my, my name is Wanda. You're here tonight, woman of God, not by coincidence.
I know. Yeah. yeah what, what, but what did I just say? She says, yes, but I never said it out loud. What did I just say? What did I just say? I said, the person in whom I'm speaking in reference to is contemplating suicide. But what did I say? I said, but nobody knows it. Did I not just say that? I said, you're here for the very first time. I say, but nobody know you've been dealing with this. The woman of God came for, number one, she says, sir, this is my first time here. Then she said, my name is Wanda. Then she said, yes, but I never said it out loud. Let me say something to you. You're here tonight. See, God wants, I, listen, God wants everybody here tonight to know that this is not a fake. This God, God wants you to know that this is not fake. God wants you to know that this is not foolishness. This is not manipulation. This is not stupidity. God wants you to know this is the Holy Ghost. Listen to me. How else would I know that there was a woman of God here, number one, who was here for the very first time, and number two was contemplating suicide, or the enemy was trying to get her to take her life? How else would I know that, save God himself, ministered to me or spoke to me? I'm not smart enough to know that. I'm not intellectual enough to know that. I don't have enough insight apart from the Holy Ghost to know that. It was the Spirit of God that spoke to me concerning this woman because God wants her to know that he has a plan for her life. Woman of God, I want you to have an understanding that you're not here by way of accident. You're here by way of divine providence. You're not here because somebody invited you here. You are here because God led you here. You're here because God wanted you to be here. Because God wanted you to know that no matter how rough it's been, he wanted you to know that no matter how difficult it's been, he wanted you to know that no matter how challenging it's been, he wanted you to know that there is a light, not at the end of the tunnel, but there's a light in your tunnel. You're right where you need to be. And God wanted you to know that tonight so that you wouldn't give up on him because he's haven't, he, haven't, he hasn't given up on you. You're here tonight. I feel glory now. I feel glory. I said, I feel glory. You are here tonight, Wanda. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. I see you crying in the spirit days ago. I see you crying. I see you crying. Saying, I just can't take this no more. I can't do it no more. I can't go through this no more. I, I can't live like this anymore. I want you to have an understanding that God brought you here tonight so that I can tell you that things are changing for you and they're changing right now. God brought you here tonight so that I can tell you that when you walked onto this scope, you walked into change. I'm not just speaking words. I'm not just saying things that sound good. I'm telling you what's about to happen for you and what the devil wanted to take away from you. You walked into change. You didn't just click on a scope. You walked into change. And I want you to lift up your hands right where you are. I want you to lift up your hands right where you are. With tears of frustration rolling down your face, lift up your hands right where you are. And thank God that change has come. 
the enemy didn't want you to be here tonight. He didn't want you to be here tonight. He didn't want you to be here tonight. It wasn't easy for you to come on here tonight. And I'm going to tell you why it wasn't easy. Because the enemy didn't want you to be here tonight. Because he knew God had something to say to you. Things are changing for you. And they're changing right now. Within the next three months, within the next three months, I want you to watch what's about to happen for you. Here is what I want you to do. I want you to find a church home. I want you to go somewhere where you can be fed. Because the word of God has the ability to strengthen you. It has the ability to strengthen you. I want you to find a church. I want you to get under somebody's covering. And I want you to be faithful to God. Hallelujah. You're a worship leader at your church. How long have you been there? Hallelujah. Let me pray for you. Six years. Six years. I hear the Lord say faithfulness. I hear the Lord say faithfulness. Faithfulness. God wants you to be faithful. I've got to say what I hear the Lord say. I hear the Lord say faithfulness. The more faithful. You are to God. The more faithful God will be to you. And I'm talking about commitment and consistency in areas that you know you haven't been committed and consistent. Can I say what God is saying? But I want you to know that this is going to be a season of change for you. A season of change. Hallelujah. She said, yes, sir. Blessings to you. Blessings to you. This is going to be a season of change for you. And I don't know why, but I see, I see a relationship that God delivered you from. I see a relationship that God delivered you from. Irregardless as to how it went down, you were delivered from this. And you were saved from this. Because God's got better for you. This is going to be a season. But things begin to line up for you. Things are going to begin to make sense for you. It's going to be a season of change. And change for the better. You're going to become more faithful to God. And God's going to be more faithful to you. And you're going to see where things are going to begin to happen for you. Watch what God does for you in this season. I take authority over the spirit of suicide that has tried to secretly steal your joy. I take authority over the spirit of suicide 
And I decree and declare that you shall live and not die. And declare the glorious works of the Lord. You shall live and not die. I take authority over the spirit of suicide. Premature thoughts of suicide. And I decree and declare in the name of Jesus that you shall live and not die and declare the wondrous works of the Lord. And I see something happening for you where transportation is concerned as well. Is she still there? Wanda, have you left us? Are you still there? I see something happening for you where transportation is concerned. Come on, everybody, go to the website, www.prophetmitchell.org. Or you can go to the cash app, dollar sign, Herm, Mitch, M-I-T-C-H. And I want you to sew $25 seed. $25 coming to pass seed. Hallelujah. Things are changing for you, Wanda. I speak that in the name of Jesus. Within the next three months, I want you to watch the doors that God begins to open for you. Things are changing for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Rhonda. I want you to pray for Rodney. I want you to, Rhonda, I want you to pray for Rodney. Do you know someone by the name of Rodney? I want you to pray for Rodney. I don't know why I looked at your face tonight and I heard the name Rodney. And all I heard was tell Rhonda to pray for Rodney. I just say what I hear. Tell, tell Rhonda to pray for Rodney. This is going to be a season where God's going to begin to open your ears, fill your mouth with his words. I want you to get ready to hear from God in a place where you've never heard from God from. And all you've got to do is trust God the voice trust the voice prophet how would i know trust the voice get ready to hear from god in a place where you have never heard from god before because god is about to open your ears and he's about to fill your mouth with his words Trust the voice. Trust the voice. There's a brother here tonight. You've been dealing with the situation where your kidneys are concerned. This is for a man of God. You're here tonight, too. You're here tonight. I'm not talking about someone who's going to catch a replay. I'm talking about somebody here tonight. You've been dealing with a situation where your kidneys are concerned. They are not, your kidneys are not functioning to its normal capacity of functioning. And I speak healing to your body now. It's a brother here tonight. I speak healing to your body and I speak deliverance.
in the name of Jesus, the healing power of God. The healing power of God overtake you. The healing power of God <whistles> overtake you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Listen, I'm out of here. Go to the website, www.prophetmitchell.org. Or you can go to the cash app, dollar sign, Herm, H-E-R-M, Mitch, M-I-T-C-H. And I want you to sow that $25 that's coming to pass. See, God's about to open your ears, put his words in your mouth. Things you spoke in times past where you spoke your own words and you saw nothing. You're about to speak then decree the word of God over a situation and see something. Watch what's about to happen. I decree and declare that within the next 25 days, God will do something for you that only he himself can. Go to the website, www.prophetmitchell.org or the cash app, dollar sign, Herm. H-E-R-E-M, Mitch, M-I-T-C-H. Wanda said, God bless you, sir. Thank you. Blessings to you. I honor you. I so, so appreciate your blessings to you, woman of God. Thank God for you. Things are changing for you. Keep your head up. Keep your head up. And she says, I sold. Blessings to you. Blessings to you, Wanda. So, so, so appreciate you. Go ahead to the website, www.prophetmitchell.org. Or you can go to the cash app, dollar sign, Herm, H-E-R-E-M, Mitch, M-I-T-C-H. And I want you to show that $25. It's coming to pass seed. God's about to open your ears. You're going to hear from God in a manner in which you've never had before. You're going to know what to do, when to do, and how to do it. When to move forward, when to stand still. Because God's about to open your ears so that you can hear. He's about to open your ears that you can hear. Prophet Isaiah said, the Lord has given me the tongue of the learned so that I may know how to speak a word to them in whom are weary. He wakened my ear morning by morning, wakened my ear that I may hear. God's about to waken your ear so that you might hear. God's about to fill your mouth with his words. You are about to decree a thing and see manifestations upon things that you've spoke. Watch what God does. I decree and declare that within the next 25 days, God's about to do something for you that only he himself can. Go to the website, www.prophetmitchell.org. Go to the cash app, dollar sign, Herm, H-E-R-M, Mitch, M-I-T-C-H. And I want you to show that $25, it's coming to pass. See, I decree within 25 days, God's about to do something for you that only he himself can. And I'm out of here. Blessings to you. Bye-bye.